right, hello everyone, and welcome to the eighth session of Tokyo Red. Uh, for the uninitiated, Tokyo Red is a continuing cyberpunk red campaign set in Tokyo rather than in Night City. Otherwise, it's in the same setting and universe as the anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 video game and the old Cyberpunk 2020 tabletop role-playing game. We're just in the year 2050 using the newest system out of RTAL. Uh, we've already had seven successful missions where we've covered missions found in the Jumpstart Kit, as well as some homebrew missions. Today's session will be a literal reversal of the very first mission we ever ran, what I mean by that will become obvious very quickly once we begin proper. I do have to do a little bit of shilling before we get to that, though. Right now, streaming and Patreon are my primary sources of income while I'm still searching for a new job. It means whatever support you can provide, whether it's a follow, sub, patron, donation, whatever, it's all greatly appreciated. But don't forget to take care of yourselves first. With that out of the way, we're going to get to the good stuff. And if you're new, we have a tradition here in this group in that we start each and every session with some form of current event monologue that ties into the overall session in some way. However, today's session is going to start a little bit differently even from that. So, McCall, as I switch screens, if you would be so kind as to read off today's screen sheet. Of course. <clears throat> Japan Today. Cyber Psycho Guy Gang takes hostages. Police standoff in progress. As of 4, 4 o'clock p.m. this afternoon, the Tokyo Metropolitan Police have been in a standoff with a group of cyber psychos calling themselves the Acolytes of Shuten Doji. This same group has been linked to a majority of the bombing and terrorist acts in the past month. However, until today, none of them have actually shown their face or had even been traced back to an identity. Their string of terrorism has carried a singular message. Prime Minister Masuda must repeal Japan's draconian weapons control laws. At first, the Prime Minister stood strong in the face of these demands. Yet more, ah, yet the more the damage toll rises, both in property damage and in actual lives, Masuda faces increasing pressure to make some sort of concession to placate these terrorists. The TPMD have cordoned off an entire city block between uh, Mie ah, Miyamasuzaka Avenue, Route 246, and Mijidori Avenue. Most of these, ah, most of their four, ah, most of their focus seems to be on a building adjacent to the Hikari skyscraper. Details about the situation are being kept quiet, but your faithful reporter has managed to glean a few tidbits of information. Approximately 15 hostages have been taken by what appears to be four individuals. These four are registered in the Cyberpsychosis Rank Database, Cyberpsychosis Risk Database, yet the TPMD has been adamant about not releasing their names. The Psych Div has being called in and is likely trying to defuse this tense situation. All right. So, as I said, we are starting off a little bit differently. We are going to start in Media Race with those of you who are members of Psyche Div. Uh, you are already in the office receiving a report. Uh, now, I will like to point out uh, that there is a strange individual uh, in the corner that has been invited, but uh, you'll learn who they are very quickly. So, uh, Chief Rio uh, sort of coughs and says, <clears throat> All right, folks, uh, let's go over the basics of the situation one more time before we get the, uh, shall we say, boots on the ground. As you well know, uh, the Acolytes of Suit and Doji have taken over uh, the building identified here. And on the screen behind her is a triangular building. Uh, it is a right triangle such that uh, the two longer sides... Um, are forming almost an acute angle. So um, just imagine an elongated right triangle. And it sort of zooms in to the second floor where you see um, various sort of events going on, like little dots and dots moving around. And she says, At approximately 6 p.m. today, uh, the following individuals uh, burst in to the offices seen here and took 15 hostages. And on that, three women appear on the screen behind her. The first is Todokata. The second is Mizaki Ma Mako, or Mako. And the third is Mia Sen. And Ryo sort of motions at all of them. Now, these three uh, are obviously in the Cyberpsychosis Risk Database. The first two, Kata... And Mako, they are melee specialists. 
They used to work on the police force, but due to their, shall we say, enhanced Borg nature, they were pulled from the force for worries that they might go postal uh, mid-police duty. The other one, uh, Mia Sen, is supposedly an expert at tactics and explosives, used to be an edge runner. Uh, they have since retired, but as given by the situation, uh, obviously they have come out of retirement. Now, there is a fourth member that we weren't able to identify, but there is a fourth member in play here, and we believe they might be a net runner, as the building's net completely changed mere minutes after all the hostages were taken. Now, uh, I don't need to tell you that this is bad. We have 15 hostages. We have possibly four cyber psychos. Uh, but that, if that wasn't bad enough, uh, I just recently received uh, the following from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And on the screen next to the three women appears a gentleman. Uh, the gentleman is rocking sort of a goatee. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't want to say handlebar mustache, but it's pretty close. Uh, slicked back hair. And uh, the chief says, this is uh, Lewis Walker. He works for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I have been told in, in no uncertain terms that if we can't handle the situation, she motions at the room, and if we don't do it quickly, then the self-defense forces will be taking over. And I don't think I need to tell you that that will likely mean dead hostages. So while you all are doing your best to save said hostages, including this man, I will be running interference with the ministries. Any questions? And she opens the floor. I'm assuming that they're ask. Are they asking for the same thing for the weapons laws to be with withdrawn? That is correct. Uh, however, there is something a little bit odd. Uh, Kure, if you would be so kind, and uh, Kureasa says, "Ah, yes, Chief. Uh, I've been running uh, communications interference, uh, trying to keep." Uh, details from leaking out to the press, uh, but really what's caught my attention is uh, their manifesto. It is still their same MO. They they want the weapons laws repealed, but something just doesn't add up. Uh, they haven't taken hostages like this in the past. I mean, yes, there was the whole bus incident, but I don't know, just something feels weird about this one. Like, it's too convenient. Possible copycat? It's a possibility, yes, but... Uh, and Petrovic speaks up. I think what uh, Kore is trying to say is that... Uh, is perhaps, like, uh, giving yourself present on birthday too early. And Courage kind of looks at him like, uh, sure? Right. All right, keep an eye open for weird things. Got it. And then uh, the chief says, all right, very well. Uh, you are all given uh, almost full discretion on this. Of course, I would prefer it if you did not shoot hostages to shoot targets behind them. Uh, but whatever you need. If you need to take the suits, take the suits. Uh, I've also requisitioned 10 gallon over here. And the woman in the corner with the large sniper rifle just kind of waves. Requisitioned 10 gallon from the regular force. She's our best sniper. And uh, hopefully uh, we can handle this with a minimal loss of life. I believe that's always the goal, Chief. Very I'm good. My best. You have your orders. Get to it. I'm going to look look across to uh, 10 Gallon and go, are you the same one who um, we gave a bloody nose to when we first met you guys? Or is the title somehow passed from recruit to recruit? Oh, no. I'm still the one that uh, messed up pretty badly. So 10 gallon refers to what? Oh, uh, well, in my last body, I used to wear a lot of cowboy hats. Ah, I see a full personality download. Cool. Right. I better requisition ammo. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to take that. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me stop you. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to put us on uh, the actual map so that we can kind of start planning how you're going to approach this. And we'll say for sake of argument, you're able to hook up with the rest of the edge runners, the rest of your group, and uh, you'll be able control. to discuss things that way. 
So let me zoom a little bit all the way out so that the uh, rest of the stream can see what's going on. So as I said, this is a uh, right angle, uh, triangle-like building. Uh, its long longest side is almost entirely glass uh, as it opens up into four different offices. Uh, the pinnacle of the triangle is actually a bunch of meeting rooms and otherwise a um, sort of an empty space compared to the rest. Now the offices uh, are these first four rooms that you see at the top on the map. Um, and based on the current situation, in the largest office facing the windows are approximately six hostages and the woman you have been informed is named Todakata. The second largest office, along the hypotenuse of the triangle, uh, contains four hostages, along with Maya Sen. And one of the hostages is, presumably, based on their appearance, Lewis Walker, the individual you were told belongs to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Then the third office is just a bunch of cubicles and other sort of desk trappings. And finally, near the elevators and staircases is the third cyber psycho, you, cyber psycho that was identified, is uh, Miyasaki uh, Mako. Now, you, again, were told there were four individuals that were part of this, but according to the current camera setup, you're not seeing any. So either they're hiding for one of the hostages. Correct. And let's say for uh, in-character purposes, uh, this is about the time that Steel has showed up, and you can tell Steel what's happening in character. Yeah, All right. She just came along with the rest of the edge runners. Mm -hmm. Well, this is All also right. because Spot's running a little bit late, so now you know you can catch him up real quickly. So let's see. Shogun, Steel, airbags. We have a hostage situation here. Oh, hostage situation. Again? Yes. Uh, one. Uh, yeah. Three cyber psychos, at least. Working for possibly working for an extremist organization, have at least a half, over a half dozen hostages, including a important foreign minister. There might also be a net runner in there. Might be either disguised as a hostage or keeping on the side of the camera. Save as many of the hostages as possible. Capture the target. Okay. Um, what is the what is the is there a pr principal owner operator of this building? Is it a corporation? Is it uh, tenants uh, just freelanced out to small businesses? Uh, yeah, it is just your standard municipal building where uh, most of the space is just rented out to people. Uh, it does not belong to, say, the ministry or anyone like that. Okay. So each floor tends to be its own office or own company or office space. Correct. And the good news is, is that the all the floors above and the floor below have been evacuated. It's only the second floor that is under siege right now. Who is currently building... renting out the second floor? The second floor is actually, I'm glad you asked. It belongs to a subsidiary of Arasaka, the name of which I can give you, but doesn't really have any bearing on anything. All you need, what really matters is that Arasaka technically owns this part of the office space. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. All right. Having Arasaka the involved. The buildings around it, like. So the buildings around it, uh, let me see. I believe, did I put in, of course I didn't. Uh, let me see if I hit it in the GM handout somewhere. Uh, basically, you know, I'm just going to upload it real quick. Just give me a moment. Um, if you were to take a look at Shibuya, um, pretty much right across from the metro station is a large sort of, uh, I guess you could call it a highway. It's more just a route. Um, but where I'm going with this is, as soon as I find the stupid thing, um, where I'm going with this is the surrounding area is other office buildings. Uh, the most prominent building is the one right next to you guys. And it is... Uh, an actual like mall if you will like it's a it's sort of here it is here shibuya east i knew it was here somewhere um it's sort of a let me show this to players there we go 
So if you guys look bottom left, uh, there is uh, the Hikari building. Mm -hmm. As uh, was mentioned in the screen sheet, that is sort of the mall hotel type thing that, according to my research, is actually a very uh, a staple of Shibuya. Um, the crossing is right across uh, Mejidori Avenue. Uh, your building is that one right next to Hikari before you would get to that crossing to the cross tower. Alright. How are they in terms of like height? Bigger. Uh that's actually a good question. Uh let me pull up that map again. So putting that back on screen. So if you were to look at the uh cross tower, it has the best line of sight onto the building, the uh where the hypotenuse of the building is on the regular map. I know it's it's a little bit switched here on the uh, Shibuya map, but the cross tower is high enough that it has an angle on the building. And that's probably where 10 gallons going to sit unless you tell her to sit otherwise. And the one on the other side, uh, the north of the hypotenuse. Uh, the north of that. Uh, that one is about the same height and unfortunately does not provide a line of sight to anything but the very most, uh, the northernmost window here on the map. Yeah. Which is probably good. I mean, okay, so if we can get on that building and get a zip line to that, to that window, that would gain us access to the building without being seen. If we go through the other window, mm -hmm. and that will will be seen coming, and they might start executing us in breach without being detected. We might have to take out Toda and free five Some hostages. Hostage. Collapsible ladder, hang it from the second story window. Get get at least some of them out that way. Yeah, them onto the floor below. Mm -hmm. It's only on the second floor, so get the, getting them out is you know they don't they won't have to jump too far okay um i need to know what's been done with their uh net running elevator i'm guessing that's where steel will come in mm -hmm. cuz they've got a hidden net runner somewhere who's completely rejiggered the whole place yep and uh spot are you with us yes i am excellent so oh, wait, that's you said you said spot, yeah. not Shogun. My bad. I this is Shogun speaking. Oh, I was gonna say. I, I always get you too confused. Two S words. Too, that is so fine. I'm so sorry. I get myself confused too. I saw him light but, up, but I didn't think I heard anything. Do we know uh, what the demands for the hostages are? Yeah. T uh, basically, the uh, prime minister needs to repeal a bunch of weapons laws. That probably isn't going to happen, I assume. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. So in other words, yeah. Unlikely that we're going to meet their demands. Or even come close, really. So, yeah. Also, we have to rescue the foreign exchange, or the foreign affairs minister who's inside. He's apparently kind of a big deal. Do we know which one of the hostages he is? Like uh, that would be Lewis Walker in Zone 3. Also, Steel, you are super quiet for some reason. I mean, I've got you boosted to 200 on my end, so... Uh, I always am. I just ah. need to talk about her. There we go. Okay. And yeah, uh, what I would say, Steel, is if you want to start uh, probing the uh, Netrunning Elevator... Uh, there's two ways you could go about that. Um, you could either uh, come in from the roof, because uh, there's an access terminal up there, uh, or you could enter the building of the first floor and uh, go in that way. However, um, the police line is pretty adamant about not letting anyone into the first floor um, because of fear of the hostages, you know, something going on with them. Um, but since you're working with Psyche Div, you might be able to get in regardless. It's just really which you would prefer to come in with. Would there be, do we know if there'd be any 
access point in if we did the whole zip line into this room? Um, there probably would, but what I would say is that unless you you all are extremely stealthy, the moment you hit that room, things are going to kick off. Yeah, zip lines and window smashing isn't particularly stealthy. We'll have to find some way of like suction cupping to the window, removing it, pulling it away, and letting it drop so it breaks below. Full on, full on James Bond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Or we All could right. hit the floor below at that point, gain entry that way. It won't be as loud. Are there any... Well, is the second floor or this top floor? Uh, no, the it is a total of five stories tall. Okay. Right. And they are what, the fourth. what info do we have on the upper floors? Uh, they are laid out similarly to the second floor. Uh, the third floor is actually... Uh, uh, they've knocked out the walls between the offices and just made a huge sort of open cubicle farm. Uh, the fourth floor is uh, something you don't know, actually, because it's a quote-unquote uh, company secret, as it were. So something something's going on on the fourth floor, but whether or not it has any bearing on this, you don't know. And then the fifth floor is actually just a broadcasting room for one of the... Uh, many news outlets in the area. It is not Tokyo today, but it is a news outlet all the same. Interesting. Quite. It's, uh, well, some of the officers mentioned that they had doubts about their motive. If there is something going on on the fourth floor, gaining access to that and then working down might be good. That might be where the, the net related. It might be a data heist masked in a hostage agreed we still don't know where their fourth member is perhaps we could get into the third floor a bit more stealthily than the second and run some recon have the terrorists given us any deadlines uh no they have not uh but as a reminder uh chief rio did say that there is sort of a ticking clock before right. the actual military steps in right and, and everything is... will Oh, yeah, go ahead. Gets blown to bits. Everything gets blown to bits then. Yeah. Okay. So I think, yeah, it's breaching um, into room one on the floor above. Okay. To be quieter, get in there. And they're all cyber psychos, right? So no real chance of debate. <laughs> Probably not. Not really. We can, get to this. we can get to the stairwell. We can also get a ladder that goes down from that floor above to that floor, break the other window. I can never get the base bar ping to work. Okay. Yeah, into the, the room in room two. If we can get that way, if we get hostages, we can evacuate them onto the floor above via ladder. Okay. My, my recommendation is that uh, Enzo and Xavier uh, breach floor three, find a way to get down into number two. And Spot can, or Steel can come in with us and see if there's a uh, data jack into the elevator from the third floor, which is hopefully less scary. Um, meanwhile, air, Airbags and Shogun can do some distraction on the... Uh, either do a distraction on the ground floor or come in on the second... And I kind of want to see about trying to get into the fourth floor at the same time. Wouldn't it be easier like... to just come in through the roof and work our way down? Yeah, we could do a gyro insert. I was thinking mm -hmm. the same thing. Or zip lining from a taller building next door. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how well these uh, exosuit armor things do at zip lining. Uh, they're actually very good at it. Oh, good. Yes, that's what I'm kind of thinking of zip lining. The, the fourth. How many of those do we have? Uh, at the moment, you only have three, and the only ones able to access them are uh, Enzo, Xavier, and Akari. I make this look good. I'm yeah. not particularly yeah. 
thrilled about the idea of hopping into a network with CyberCycle in it. Yeah, but I, I, I can try. Okay, so so we're all on the same page. Are we doing a roof insert? Are we doing the third floor insert? Which insert are we doing? Like, where where is steel going to be physically? A access point. <laughs> right. So there's. Well, I, right. I, I'd imagine it wouldn't be a silly idea to like, if airbags and Shogun aren't really going to be able to effectively zip line in and because they don't yeah. have suits and all, might be a good idea for them to stand bodyguard for steel makes sense yep. yeah it's a yep. double insertion i'm sorry i'm so sorry you're fine uh, are we doing phrasing is that a thing <laughs> I was, party. Yeah, i'm trying to think of a well, way to say in this that case double team doesn't in work this out. case that uh, is it, we need a two-pronged attack uh it's like shogun airbugs <laughs> and steel can be air dropped in while akari Ooh. xavier and i zip line in i can do it yeah i'm down to I'm down sounds to good that. All right. Cool. So we this joint. we are going to enter into pseudo initiative order. There is a reason for that, um, but this is also so that I don't forget everyone and I'm giving everyone a chance to act. So let's go ahead. Add turn. Add turn. All right. So if I understand correctly, uh, Shogun airbags and steel, you get a gyro insert to the roof. So you get a basically a glorified helicopter ride to the roof, and yeah. you are delivered. And sealed, you can immediately be, see through your AR goggles that there is indeed a access terminal up here on the roof next to the door. Do you, do you want us to roll initiative now or later? Uh, let's. If we actually have to get into it, we will actually do initiative. Oh, okay. Yeah, right now it's I'm just using the turn order to keep track of who's acted and how much. Oh, that's smart. Okay. I, I will, uh, for my first in an action, activate Speedy. Okay. Oh. And uh, I've just been fucked over by... Hellhounds more than anything, so I don't know if Flack is worth the time or effort. I'll just, okay, yep. Yeah, I'll just activate Speedy, then jack in. Alright, you jack in, and you see that waiting for you is a rather impressive looking password. Uh, whoever did the encryption on this is uh, a savant. They they did their good, they did a rather good job on this. Like, this is, this is even more advanced than the suit was. Damn. Um, hmm. Pathfinds. Try and see what's behind Password. Go for it. So Steel has rolled a 15. And with a 15, I'm going to say that you are able to see that there are three floors to this elevator. The first, obviously, is uh, the one with the password. The second floor does appear to have a presence there. Uh, but with only a 15, I'm going to say you don't know what exactly is there. Could be Black Ice, could be an enemy Netrunner, could be many things, but you're not sure. Uh, and then the third floor, uh, there appears to be a control node, but a control node for what? You have no idea. Many things could be on the second floor, all of which I am not a fan of. Uh, those are my three net actions, so if anyone else wants to do some. Yep. So, uh, who would like to act next? Do we want to do a stealth to see how quiet we go into the zipline? Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, are fair. you guys going into the fourth or the third floor? Because I know there was some discussion there. The floor above where they are. I think. Third yeah, floor. I think third floor is best. Okay. Uh, let's have Xavier. Let's have you roll a stealth, please. And as a quick reminder, if you are wearing the Arty Guardian suits, we get plus one to reflex. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw. Was there a handout for the Guardian suit? No, but I will put one in very quickly. I'm going to throw one look at my stealth roll. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, only a nine. Well, a, an 11, Ten. technically. Oh. 11. 
and a 16. Okay. So I'm going to say that between the two of you, uh, you are able to uh, more or less uh, get a latched on to the building. However, it does make a noticeable thunk as the line hits the building. And I'm going to roll something for Miss Kata. Good news is that uh, based on the feed you're getting from the rest of the police force that's keeping an eye on everything, uh, none of the cyber psychos have reacted to you uh, ziplining over. Cool. Now the question is, you all, you three of you are able to zip line over no problem, but now how are you breaching the glass? Are you going to do it Bond style, where you know you do the circle cut and then push in? Are you literally just going to punch a hole? I like the Bond style. Okay. I think it's good. Yeah, like put a suction cup on there to hold it, and then just yeah, cut around the outside. Okay. So we um, just pull it out and it drop. Are you going to be using rippers, a knife? Like, what is your carving implement? And I'd say the suits have their own. I just need to know that you're yeah. using the suits. Yeah, let's, I feel like the suit would have, like, a laser scalpel that wouldn't make as much noise as, like, a blade on glass. Okay. All right, uh, Xavier, let's have you roll me. Hmm, what to have you roll here? I'm thinking a... A concentration would actually probably apply here because uh, if you're not careful, uh, you could accidentally uh, cause the glass to shatter and or fall away. You don't want it to. All right. I'm going to throw another luck at this. Okay. Xavier has rolled a 15 and a 15. Well, that's conversation, but what did you roll? Oh. Sorry. You're fine. Uh, what is your concentration add? Uh, where? Concentration is a four. Okay, so that would have been a 13 instead. Okay. Uh, still enough. Uh, with a 13, you are able to carve that hole and slip inside. So you all are in room one, just on the third floor. All right. And then airbags and shogun, you are on the roof with steel. Are you guys doing mm -hmm. anything in particular? Um, just, nah, I don't want to do keep anything. Look out. Keep yeah. a lookout. Keep a lookout. Keep a lookout. I'd like you both to roll me a. Let's just call this a uh, awareness, please. Uh, oh my god! Looking through the character sheet. Oh right, me. awareness isn't a thing. Uh, roll me Is a. Let's do a perception. Game systems just start to blend together over time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Shogun with a 17 and Airbags with a 20. Uh, you are both able to notice, uh, actually rather immediately, that the antennas on the roof, uh, you know, because there is a TV station on the fifth floor, so they need some sort of broadcasting implement. Um, the lights on the broadcasting towers are off. They should be on. Yep, so I think airbags will sort of frown at that and go, I didn't hear anything about the broadcasting towers being shut down. Did you? No. I'm not. And, uh, and these are the broadcasting good. towers for the office building itself, right? Correct. So does that mean there's someone like cutting these down that should not be? Either that, or someone's cut the building off from the network, which is more than just a one lone net runner can do, unless they're a very skilled net runner. I don't know anything about net runs. So that terrifies me. Psych might have done it themselves. Oh yeah, they could have. Possible. Well, you Let's are on with they... the uh, with the rest of Psyche Div. You could ask. True, and airbags will sort of tap through to Ikari. Uh, Kari, the comm towers at the top of the, the at the top of the building uh, are turned off. Is that supposed to be the case? News to me, airbags. I'll mm. I'll, I'll uh, page the whoever is the officer in charge and see if they have anything, any insight into the situation. Sure. And I'll say for sake of argument, you get Curry because uh, she's sort of playing uh, socialite at the moment, and uh, Curry says. 
Uh, no, this is the this is the first time I'm hearing about any building cut. Uh, can and she like kind of uh, consults someone off screen for a moment and says, "Yeah, uh, they've hard cut the building. This this you don't do this for a hostage situation unless you really mean it." Well, that's or interesting. They, or unless the hostage screen is a cover for something else. True, true. I still haven't been able to find anything on the fourth floor. It's it's some military research development thing, but I just can't seem to get in. Now I see why the military is so interested in getting into this place. Since we're in the building, could we do like um, a scan to see if we can figure out what it is? Since you we're on the third floor. You certainly may. Uh, go ahead, Xavier, and roll me a perception, please. And I will give you a plus two from the suit. Ooh, unfortunately, with a eight and a critical failure, uh, that is only a grand total of six. So, unfortunately, you're not able to pierce the, the floor of four floor. Uh, in fact, you are actually rebuffed by some sort of scanning countermeasure. Uh, almost like a Faraday cage has surrounded the fourth floor. So I look to uh, Enzo, uh, yeah, Enzo and Akari and go, well, there's something blocking all scans. Like, even from this distance, I can't pierce it. Am I able to glean anything from the... Or if there's in any effect or difference in the system from the building being cut off uh no the uh the good news for you at least is that this is just your standard elevator it's not like connected to another elevator or it doesn't branch it seems very straightforward hmm. all right so yeah let's uh let's have steel act next so steel you have three net actions Very, very fancy password. Uh, I'll just take my first shot at Vector. Okay. And with a 14, unfortunately, it is not enough to break the password. I may recommend spending luck here. Yeah, I was, was going to take it one shot before spending luck. So how much luck fuck, are you spending? Fuck it, I got a lot. Let's use five. Five luck it is. Nice. And you get a critical success as these things happen. Nice. <laughs> wow. All right, nice. so that's, that's... That's like 30-something. Yeah, so that's a 17 plus an 8 plus a 5. Yeah, you got it. You break that password like it's nothing. The first attempt was basically just like testing the waters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is easy. Do do dumb. <laughs> yep. So you are now able to proceed uh, further into the elevator, and remember that moving floors is a free action. I'll just use... Hmm, I don't want to just run... I really don't want to run in there blind. I'll use my last minute action to activate flak and then and without going down. Okay. Uh, so Xavier's already acted. Akari and Enzo, what are you two doing? Enzo's moving to the door and checking it, listening, opening it, glancing down the hallway. Okay. So uh, you open the door into the uh, dim light of the setting sun in the background, and uh, you're not really seeing anyone or anything besides from office equipment and uh, sort of discarded personal effects, uh, what you might expect from a building that has been evacuated in haste. Clear. Akari. Get to the get to the other window. Set up the ladder. Yep. So I will go to the window above um hostage four on the third floor. Okay. And then I will attempt to set up the extendo ladder. Okay. Uh go ahead and roll me. Uh let's call this let's call this as an athletics here. Okay. So I have that. Um, I will spend uh, two points of luck. 
Okay. Oh, that's not Ooh, going to help. Yeah, unfortunately, with a critical failure, uh, that is a grand total of four as a final result. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, what happens uh, is I'm going to give you an option here. Um, you can either lose the ladder completely or you deploy the ladder, but it makes a noticeable thunk on the window. Which would you prefer? Uh, I think I will sense that there there's something wrong with the, extend of, with the extension mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to realize that it's going to cause a major problem. And then I'm just going to push it out the window so it falls to the ground. And as it clatters against the ground, uh, you are told via a uh, police hook-in that uh, Totokata has moved over to inspect the window. Right. Okay. All right. So Can that leaves that? airbags and Shogun. Hmm. Do we want to try hooking the thing back up to the network? Do you think that would be any use? It asked that to me. Um, I'm not sure. I think we should. Mm. Uh, let's see if this thing's actually like just turned off or if they've actually cut the power entirely. All right. So let's uh, let's have airbags. Let's have you roll a. Let's call this a basic tech. You. And That's 11. 11. All right. Uh, I mean, you know, tech isn't your thing. You usually do the driving, but with an 11, you still see something very obvious. The hard line, like lever that turns on and off, is currently set to the off position. Hmm. Would there be any benefit is, we'll turn... to it on? Would I know? Well, it would let. Yeah, I mean, that's the question. Like, it would let the police department, like, l look in and see what's going on, but it might also tip them off. Although, a possible idea, and I'll, like, pull out his agent, maybe we can, like, plug into the thing without turning on the antenna and see what's going on. Okay. Yep, and he's going to just, like, try and find a, like, data jack to sort of plug his agent into and see if he can look at what's running through the system at the surface level. I'll uh, keep an eye out just to make sure no one's coming up on us. Alrighty. So my, uh, my important question for your airbags is, do you have anything in interface? Do I? Let's see. I don't think you do, but I'm asking all the same just in case. No, I don't. Okay. Then all that's going to happen when you connect your agent is you are asked for a login and you have no idea what the information is to log in with. Nah, worth a shot. All right. So we come to uh, the quote unquote third round here. Uh, and we're going to have Steel act first. Steel, uh, what is your play here? I don't like going in blind, and also if it is the other netrunner on the next floor, then the second I walk in there, the entire system, everyone's gonna like get the get the uh, solid snake uh, exclamation point above their head. <laughs> I uh, feel like mm, I'm, I'm just gonna pathfind again to see if I can't figure out what's on the next floor. Okay. A pathfind of a thirteen. Again, you're not able to really confirm what it is on the second floor. It could be an enemy netrunner, could be black ice, could be many things. You just know that it's probably going to be hostile to you. And again, you are able to see that there is a control node on the third floor. However, now that you've scanned past the password, you are able to see that there is actually a second control node. It is not just the one. Because it's like, if it's a if it's black ice, then I can just try and slide past it. If it's the net runner, then I'm gonna have the full on fight to the death. Okay. Do it. You know you want to. I I don't. <laughs> Do it. Fuck it. Go down to the next floor. 
All right, you go down to the next floor and immediately your worst fears are confirmed because not only is there a spectral wolf that is chanting your name there, but there's also a, a avatar of what is uh, an enemy Netrunner. So first things first, I need Steel. I need you to roll me your speed here. And then the Hellhound's going to roll its speed. And if it rolls higher than you, you are getting smacked. I have speedy on... Thankfully. Oh dear. They have rolled a 16, which is a crit, so they get to roll another d10. Total of 20. Total. I got a 13. Okay. So it is at this point that we are actually going to go into initiative order, so if everybody could go ahead and roll that for me. And I think you can change it on uh, the turn order yourself, but if you can't, just let me know. There we go. All right, and then I need to put Coda on here. Her speed is this much. I think Steel needs to somehow find a way to build her own Hellhound and bring it around. Hi. Okay. Yep, you'll see. She, you have plans. Good. All right, so she has rolled a 25. All right, uh, what did Airbags roll? A 12. Shogun, you were an eight. All right, so we are all set up. Sort descending. All right, so Steel, you have um, basically two net actions, and then the entire uh, turn order will kick off. Uh, my first or my second net action will be to activate my Hellhound. All right, so you nice. activate your own Hellhound. It's hard to the net runner, obviously. So yours will be ally. And we'll give it a nice blue dot to symbolize that it is yours. And my last net action. Do I want to stand and fight? That's the question here. Eh, fuck it. Let's. I've never done that before. Let's use my last net action to ban hammer attack the hell. Ban hammer attack the hellhound. Very good. I believe that's just your interface. Uh, with the band hammer is a plus two. A twelve. Well, it's uh, its defense isn't amazing, so let's see what happens there. Survey says ten, so tie goes to the defender. So unfortunately, no, I got a twelve total. A oh, twelve total. Well, in that case, yes, you do band hammer the hellhound enemy. That's three d six res. Eleven. Eleven res. So yeah, your band hammer slams into the spectral wolf chanting your name, but uh, it just looks hurt, but it doesn't look like it's going anywhere soon. Mm -hmm. Alright. Are there any... Uh, that's my last night action, but are there any uh, visible... Like, do I see the icons of any programs on the end or Netrunner? I would say no. Simply because whoever they are, they're doing a very good job of cloaking themselves. <clears throat> Alright. So my next question is, are you telling your team that you have engaged the enemy? Uh, yeah, it's like basically... I was saying, like, if I encounter the other Netrunner, they're all gonna know I'm here. And like, one second later, okay, there they, there they are. <laughs> So, Xavier, you have just been informed over comms that they might know you're here. Oh, did we lose Scotty? Oh, I'm here. They know we're here. What do, you, what do we do? Well, if they already know that we're here, the element of surprise is going away quickly. Um, at least in the network, they know that they're here. Let's hope that they don't have comes between everything but moving down a floor our floor is going to become more and more crucial in the coming seconds yeah <clears throat> all right um whose turn oh xavier's turn yeah it is xavier's turn all right um well from the window you have a shot at toda just saying 
or we could worry about getting. Yeah, yeah, she is now within the window. You could hypothetically. Yeah, see if we can shoot. Well, that's also we'd have to go down a floor and shoot through the window. Um, we can shoot in it. I don't suppose. I mean, if you shoot the window out, I have a cool idea, which is probably going to blow up in my face. What is? This I mean, idea? we've done this once before, and it worked. My cool idea is for me to basically do a zip line tackle where I swing out and then swing back in and then tackle this cyber psycho. Play bold. Yes. Play it like you stole it. Well, if you do that while um, either I or Enzo goes down the stairwell to take out Mako, that means we just have one in between. Mm hmm. Let's do that. That sounds like a fun plan. Okay. All righty. So Xavier, you uh, you meet up with Enzo and head for the stairs. Yes. Yes. All righty. So let's say you get to there. All right, Enzo. Just to make sure, are you following Xavier? Um, I'm actually gonna motion to the elevator. Others are probably locked down. We can probably pry the door open. Mm-hmm. That you could. So yeah, robot arms in there. Door open. I'd like you to roll me a uh, a stealth here, please, just to see if uh, the door makes any random creaks. Uh, with a fourteen, you're fine. You are able to get the door open without much fanfare. Right. So, uh, Saber, how about this for a plan? We go down. I wait below the bottom of the elevator doors. You open the elevator doors from above. When Masako comes to look, why the elevator doors open? I can take her out. That I like that plan just as well. Let's do it. All right. And that's what will happen next turn when it comes around to you all. Uh, Akari, what are you doing? Um, attach the hook and grapple system of the armor to something sturdy. Okay. I'm going to give myself a push out and then push back in on the second floor window and try my best to take uh, or at least knock Toda uh, off balance. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a back-to-back uh, -back check here. I need you to roll me an athletics to see how well you are able to swing out and control your momentum. Okay. Rolling athletics. Ooh. Hey, an 18 plus a 5 for a grand total of 23. Very nice. Uh, what I would say is that not only are you able to basically kick your way into the second floor window with style, uh, you do so in such a manner that I will give you a plus two bonus on your follow-up attack. Now, are you aiming to just hit them with your feet? Are you actually trying to hit them with like a cyber arm or rippers? Um, if I could use my my um, big knucks for extra melee da for melee damage, I'd like to do that. You certainly may. Okay, so that is brawling? Uh, for you, it is a melee weapon. Ah, yes. Okay, so that's under actions. And, then and you attack. can attack twice in one turn, just so you know. The suit also gives an extra d6 to that, right? It does. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, so that's a 20 for my first attack. Okay. Let's see how well uh, she rolls her evasion here. Survey says... She has rolled a 25. She actually evades, Oof. even with all the bonuses. Oh, wow. Well, there goes the element of my surprise, but I still get a second attack, so I'm going to try that. Mm -hmm. Six. Oh, uh, 16. Oh, you, all right, so what happens is you're first, as you bust through the window, um, Totakata is already in movement out of the way so that as you swing in, uh, they are able to sidestep your blow. Uh, however, you catch yourself very quickly, turn, and ram your big knucks into them. So go ahead and roll me some damage. Oh. In, Not a lot, but... In eight oh, damage. Sure. Well, the good news is that uh, it is something that ignores half the armor. Uh, unfortunately, even with it ignoring half the armor, 
your your punch goes nowhere. You hit pure Borg body, and it just does nothing, unfortunately. Well, okay. All right, Steel, you've already acted this round, so airbags, uh, what are you doing at this point? Well, we've heard from Steel that the element of surprise is gone, so airbags is just going to sort of look at Shogun for just an okay and then reach up to grab the big lever and turns turns the communication towers back on. Okay. So you turn it on and the tower begins yeah. flickering to life. And uh, as Because I figure that the military are probably watching like hawks. Oh yeah. Uh, as that's happening, uh, Akari, I'd like you to roll me a human perception, please. Okay. Uh, that is under awareness? Nope. It's under social skills. Social skills. There it is. A 17. Uh, with a 17, uh, you know, you're maybe a little bit flummoxed that your punch didn't work. Uh, however, you notice something very interesting in that, of course, you don't know what's causing it. Out of character, you know it's because the tower turned on. But in character, it's almost as if uh, Totokata's head twitches for a moment. Like it's like they've just heard something or something's connected to them. Okay. Not going to, I'm just going to file that away for stuff that might prove interesting later. Okay. All right. So that's going to be airbags this turn. Shogun, what are you doing? I'm going to go in with him. Okay. So you're running down the staircase then? Yeah, I have a gun ready too. All righty. So we'll deal with that next round. All right. Top of the initiative order, we have the enemy hellhound. I also need to put the ally hellhound on the map. The ally would go first. Descending. The ally would go before the enemy because I popped it in afterward. True, true. So let me adjust that. And uh, let's see. It's going to see two targets and it is going to go for the enemy netrunner. So that's going to be a grand total of... Do, 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 eight. You think I'd set up macros for this, but uh, apparently not. Twelve, and the enemy netrunner is going to go ahead and roll their interface. They've rolled a 16, so they gracefully uh, avoid your hellhound, unfortunately. Now on the enemy hellhound's turn, uh, they have rolled an 11. So I just need steel for you to roll me your interface. And the speed boost only affects the initial roll, right? I believe so, yes. Oh, I see a critical um, success. A 27, yeah. You avoid the absolute uh, okay. living hell out of the hellhound. Double 10. All right. So up next is the enemy netrunner, and they are actually going to attempt to zap you, specifically steal. Mm -hmm. So uh, the number to beat here is a 12. And Defender. you roll a 12 exactly, which means that uh, their zap is ineffective. But they're going to try again. And apparently they're going to roll another 12. And you've rolled a 10. So this time the zap does go through. But it does no damage and it hits my flak. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much res? Okay, the, just it stops the non-first successful. Got it. So your, your flak is down. And it is at this point, because that's all the actions the enemy Netrunner has, uh, we turn our attention to Xavier and en Enzo. All right, Enzo, you ready? Ready. All right, so I'm opening the door. Okay, go ahead and roll me in athletics, please. 13 is enough. You are able to get the door open enough for Enzo. I suppose... Uh cinematically it'd be we'd both climb down the elevator and then he'd ready to open the door and i'm in position yeah basically your turn's below, happening yeah. at the same time yeah so i'm standing at below the elevator while it's open doors opening waiting for masaka to come and investigate mm -hmm. yeah sure enough she does uh kind of wander over kind of you know hesitantly look at the doors and then she'll lean forward so that she can take a look up and down the shaft and then I reach up, grab her, and just pull her down. Okay. 
I believe uh, that is going to be an opposed brawl. Sounds reasonable. Oh, I should have used luck. Oh, well. All right. A 16. You know, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe she's not feeling it today. Who knows? Uh, nope, no, she's, she's really not feeling it. That is a total of an eight. So that is literally half of what you rolled. So yeah, I would say you attention for all intents and purposes. Uh, you currently have her in a grapple. I'm just, yeah, I'm just actually just pulling her down and letting her fall down in the shaft head first. Okay. It's only two floors down, but still. Yeah. Still a good amount of damage. So you, she goes tumbling into the elevator shaft and we'll deal with her on her turn. Uh, we turn to Akari. Uh, you are going toe to toe with a cyber psycho. What is your move here? Um, now, was Toto one that was melee specialized? Correct. Well, I'm boned. Okay. So, now the weapons of the suit mentioned a photon assault cannon with four charges. Mm -hmm. um, do the how often do those charges regenerate, or is it basically use them and they're done for this combat? This session. This session. Okay, uh, going to save that then uh, for the moment. I'm going to try to stay, take a couple steps back, if she'll let me, and try to um, pluck her with a shot with my shotgun. Alrighty. Here goes nothing. Uh, let's see, shotgun attack. Yep, and the DB here is a 15, and a 20 is more than enough. So go ahead and roll me some shotgun damage. Uh not to be this person, but I don't see the bad guys. Should have. Uh, have you're right. No, you are completely right. They are not in there for some reason. I'm I'm okay with that. Let me just <laughs> very quickly <laughs> add them. All right, so me a second. We don't need enemies. We can solve our problems with peace. They're all like clearly something um, from the radio. Toda was doing, and Toda missed a turn by being completely surprised. Yeah, so Toda's turn is completely missed, uh, and then Miyasako is a nineteen. Actually, I need to roll for Toda because I had those backwards. Initiative a sixteen. All right. So, for sake of uh, sake of argument, uh, Toda was unable to act this turn, um, but. It is still Akari. All right. So Akari, uh, you're doing 18 damage as you pump a shotgun round into Toda. And uh, it actually seems to do quite a bit of damage. Uh, the pellets of your shotgun round uh, embed themselves into the Borg body and do uh, actually some some damage, which is a good thing. <clears throat> All righty. And yeah. I believe that is your turn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yell. Oh, go I, I want to do a quick shout to the hostages uh, to gather up in the back corner, like away from where shotguns and fists are going to be flying fairly shortly. Got it. All right, airbags. What are you up to? Hmm. Uh, I think he is going to just stick around and. Just watch Steel's back because you never know when one of them's going to try and rush up to the roof to take out the Netrunner. Fair, fair. And speaking of Netrunner, how you doing there, Steel? Uh, do, 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 do. Let's just first in action, man hammer, ham hellhound again. Okay. A 16, the hellhound has rolled an 11. So yes, you are able to do more damage. Another 11. Another 11. Unfortunately, not quite enough to kill it. It's, you know, maybe a strong breeze, a virtual breeze would knock it over. But, unfortunately, 11 is not enough. So yeah. what are your next two net actions? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really want this hellhound gone. Yeah, I'll just ban hammer it again. So you have Banhammer in your deck twice. Oh, yeah, you can't use them on the same turn. Mm -hmm. You're right, you're right, you're right. So never mind of that. Um, Zap is only 1d6, right? Correct. I don't remember. Yeah, hold on, I'm reading Zap again because I forgot. 
that exists. <laughs> yep. Uh, basically, you can roll an attack against a program or an enemy netrunner. Uh, and if you succeed, you deal uh, 1d6 damage. Right. Yeah, I'll zap the hellhound. Okay. So you zap for 14. The hellhound resists with a 17 plus whatever, because that's a crit. They, they've definitely beat you here, unfortunately. Last net action, activate Flak again. So my understanding is Flak is a one and done. I could be wrong. Yeah, okay. so let me check. Actually, it does not say that it can only act be activated once. So yeah, you could res it again. All right, so flak your flak is back up then. Flak Those are is my back. three actions. All right. So, Shogun, you are running down the stairs, and I'm going to yeah. say you've made it to the second floor door. Uh, do you want All to right. open it? or I'm going to open it and then have my pistol at the ready. Okay. You open it, and uh, you see sort of in motion uh, Masaki and Mako being flung down the elevator and the hand of Enzo doing, you know, sort of dragging her into the elevator shaft. Oh. Uh. Oh, wait, so she's she's in the elevator shaft, like in it or like falling down? Falling down it. Okay, I asked Enzo, is this a problem still? No. Okay, I'm gonna... Uh, where should I go then? I'm gonna keep going down the staircase. Alright, so you're gonna go to the first floor. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna check in the hostages. Alright. Which means top of the initiative order, the a the what is it? The ally hellhound may act. So if you want to roll for them, steal. Uh, do do do. What's their? Their attack is an eight. All right. Nice. Oh, that was ELH's roll. Yeah, I was say. So with a twelve, uh, the enemy is going to. Roll a 16, so unfortunately your Hellhound is just not doing anything good. Uh, but that does now mean that it's the enemy Hellhound's turn. And the... No oh, dear. The yeah. number to beat here is a 20. Ah, damn it. This... Mm, do I spend luck? I would. I'll spend two luck. Okay. And oh, unfortunately, yeah. 15 plus two is only a 17, which means the Hellhound is going to finally sink its virtual jaws directly into your brain, as it were, meaning wow. that you take a grand total of 10 damage directly to your brain. Ow. Alrighty. Up next, it's the enemy Netrunner's turn, and uh, they're just going to zap you. So that's a grand total of 16. And a 23 is more than enough. They try zapping you that. once more. If I can have rolled that against the Hellhound, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Hellhounds hurt more. All right, this time a 13 versus a 9. Unfortunately, the 13 does beat a 9, so you are going to take a, another zap, but thanks to your flak armor, uh, that is uh, effectively negated. And that is the enemy's turn. Uh, up next is Miyasaki Mako. Uh, they are going to make a attempt to catch themselves uh, as they are falling through the elevator shaft. Uh, they are unable to, and they end up falling and landing uh, rather uh, ungracefully on top of the elevator, which is at the bottom floor. And uh, as they begin to pick themselves up, they just sort of look up at you, Enzo, and do one of those, you know, eyes-to-your-eyes eyes motion with their fingers. And then Totokata is actually going to do something that Akari's not going to like. Uh, Kata is going to grab hostage number one, and put it or put them squarely between the two of you. All right. And then it's Xavier's turn. Um, I'm gonna hop down out of the elevator shaft onto the second floor, and proceed down the hallway, trying to get like over here to confront uh, Sen. Okay. 
And the uh, the reason I didn't have her in initiative order is because she was going to act pretty much whenever someone stepped around the corner. So let me actually put her in initiative order now. She had a 21. And uh, as soon as you round the corner, she is going to open up with her shotgun. So survey says... A 17 is the number to beat. And I'm rolling evasion. Yes. Well, is your reflex nine or higher? Um, let me see here. Don't forget the plus one ref from the armor. Mm -hmm. uh, with the plus one, my reflex would be eight. Yeah, unfortunately, in that case, uh, you don't get to roll. It is just I am given a DV on a chart. And the DV to beat was a 15, so 17 obviously being greater. Uh, you're going to be taking a grand total of 20 damage uh, to your body. So remember to account for the armor and to ablate as needed. All right, so plus five to armor, ablate as normal. So that'd be what, 15? I believe so, yes. Well, right. let me ask this. Are you accounting for the regular armor you're wearing? Oh, um, no, I was not. Keep going. I'll figure, I'll look You'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, so up next is going to be Enzo. Enzo, you have heard the discharge of a shotgun. <sighs> Savior can handle it. Plus, Shogun's there to back him up. Uh, I'm going to do something incredibly stupid. Okay. Uh, kind of plant my legs, launch up into the air, and come down on Miyasaka. Mm, I like so it. Go boost. ahead and roll me. Are you coming down with rippers or just like your leg or uh, your Yeah, fist? I'm just going like, to land on her. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a brawling, please. A 29. That is a resounding success. And they have so only rolled a 10. On her face. Yep. So you literally drop kick her pretty damn well. Uh, and I'm going to say that uh, based on what you just rolled, um, even though technically melee doesn't go through armor, um, I'm going to say that you hit her hard enough that she is stunned and will lose her next turn. Excellent. All right. All right, Akari, you've got a hostage between you and your target. What's the play? Okay. So, my play um is to uh is this a solid wall or glass? Uh that is solid. The black heavy black line is solid. It's the longer hypotenuse double line that is the glass. Right. Okay. There goes that plan. Um what weapons does Miss Kata have? Well, I'm glad you asked. She has uh, what appears to be a set of cyber arms. She has a monofilament sword, and she has rippers. Goody, goody gumdrops. Okay. And I can't believe I just said that on stream. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well. Then, uh, obviously, I can't pump a sh shotgun blast through her. So what I'm going to do is another stupid idea. Hmm. Yeah. I need to get her out somewhere where there's out to the glass area. Because she's melee focused. Uh, she'll start killing the hostages though if I try to egg her on. Um... Okay. So I'm going to call her a coward. Mm -hmm. um, is there a taunt? Uh, uh, there skill? is a uh, conversation. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm, face down? I'm basically going to call her a cowardly, um, a cowardly cyber bitch and tell her that if she wants more um, cyber tech, and then I'm just going to make a graceful or 
make myself look as graceful in this armor as possible. But like, mm-hmm. come get it. Um, I'm trying to taunt her to drop the hostage and attack me. Hmm. So I'm going to say that's going to be probably a reputation check. Ah, okay. So I have a reputation of four. So that D10 plus four? Uh, there should be a button for it on the actions tab. Oh, actions tab. Yes, there is. I will add two points of luck. Okay. Okay, that's... Yeah, so you've rolled a two, uh, oh, okay. not including your luck. That's uh, wrong. But it does mean that the people have heard of you. Uh, however, with a 13, uh, the general vibe you're getting from Totokata is that um, they're not going to listen to what you say. And in fact, unless you run on your next turn, at least if I read this right, if you do not run on your next turn, you suffer a minus three to all actions. Oh, well, it would be the two plus the two from luck plus your cool plus your four reputation. Uh, sorry, run that past me again. What's all that? Plus two from your two luck plus yeah. four from your reputation and then plus your cool, whatever that. If it's a face down. Oh, so I should have rolled a face down roll instead of a reputation check. Oh yes, I didn't even catch that good ah. catch there. My bad. Okay, so let's roll face down instead. Okay, never mind. With a 14, they must listen, or they suffer minus three to all actions. Cool. Uh, Does that count as my combat action, or can I still try to punch her in the face? I'm going to say that probably takes your whole action, unfortunately. Fair enough. Still, I'm hoping we'll have positive influences, and I'd like to try to shuffle some of those hostages away from the fight, if possible. Okay. They'll start moving at the end of this round. All right, airbags. Uh, You have heard the muffled sound of gunshots coming up the stairwell and from the holes in the building. And a cry of pain. Hmm. All right, so sort of look between Steel and the staircase and sort of split the difference and he'll go over, position himself at the top of the staircase and just level the shotgun to fire at the first non-friendly thing that comes into view. Understood. All right, Steel, you've got three net actions. What's your play here? Man hammer the wolf. Okay. (laughs) Please. 16. All right, well, never know. You could actually hit it. Uh, Yeah, with a 12, uh, 16 definitely beats that. So go ahead and roll me some damage. Bad. All right, and with that, you literally do drop the band hammer, and the enemy hellhound is no more. It derezzes into nothingness. It has been uh, snapped. Second out action, flack. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, I can finally play with you as I zap the other net runner. Okay. Now, I will point out that there's really now nothing keeping you on this floor. Yeah, but they can follow me is the thing. This is true. I'll just hit him. Mm. Mm. No. If so, okay. If I so, they, if they do want to follow me to the next floor, they would have to slide away from the hellhound. Correct. And there's a chance that it would follow them still. Okay, so I will just go down to the next floor. Okay, so that's a free action. You have two control nodes, and you so, could use an action to activate one of them. But I don't know what they are. You have no idea what they are. Alright, I don't want to just hit random buttons. I'm going to pathfind to try and figure out what they are. <laughs> I would say, just to save you the time, pathfinding is not going to tell you what they do. <laughs> wow, okay, so it's literally coin flip. Do I hit A or B? Mm-hmm. This doesn't inspire confidence. Any, any hint or notion at all of what they Nope, you've just got a blue button and a red button. Hit the red one. <laughs> don't, no, don't push the red button. That's what Men in Black has taught me. Yes, but sometimes the red button is good. Um, I'll, I'll, One is the blue button, two is the red button. Coin flip it. Hit the red button. You hit the red button. 
And immediately, I would like uh, Akari and Enzo and Xavier to all roll me human perception, please. Wow. <laughs> Not good. Right. So, uh, Enzo, you rolled a 21. Xavier, you rolled a 10. Akari, you rolled an 11. Uh, which means that only Enzo is going to notice this. Uh, again, Enzo, you have no idea what's going on in net space. Please tell me it activated the elevator. It did not activate the elevator. Instead, uh, uh, it's almost like uh, Mi Miyazaki comes into herself. Like, her eyes like brighten and otherwise uh, become more cognizant of the surroundings. And it's almost as if something was controlling her because now she's starting to look and act less like a puppet and more like a person. None of that sounds it. None of that sounds good. And then uh, before we go to the top of the initiative order, we have Shogun. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to go out the door of the first floor, like into the first floor, and okay. I'm going to aim my gun, and I'm going to see what's going on. Wait, is this going on, the, the unpuppeteering person going on with the Mikas, Mikasi? Uh, Miyasaki and uh, yeah, sorry. Enzo are on uh, top of the elevator at the moment. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into the elevator. Okay. Right? I'm going to try basing the sound of where I think... Um, Miyazaki is and shoot there. Okay, I will say that this would be at a minus five penalty. That is so cool. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> kind of like that scene from that one movie where the guy's like, ah, never mind. It's I mean, it is a Terminator 2 scene. True, okay. Uh, okay, so minus five. How do I add the modifier to that? Uh, we'll just subtract it after your roll. All right. Uh, unfortunately, an eight is not going to be enough. But the good news is you don't hit Enzo. So Enzo, you are, of course, seeing and dealing with all this when a uh, heavy, a heavy uh, round pierces through the, the floor of the ceiling, and uh, basically say, soars past you. I say, I'm trying to shoot the cyber one. Sorry. I know. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> So the uh, ally Hellhound is going to do an attack. If uh, Steel, you want to roll that one d eight or one d ten plus eight, please. Fifteen. Fifteen. Do they avoid? They do not. You may go ahead and roll me some damage on that. Three d six, right? Yep. Wow, garbage. Seven damage. <laughs> All right, and uh, interestingly. Uh, on their turn, the Netrunner is going to jack out. Which means they are no longer in the system. And as we come around to Miyasaki Mako, uh, uh, Enzo... I would 100% just yell over to airbags. Uh, other Netrunner just left the network. They're probably on the moon. Wherever <clears throat> they are. You're going to be fine up here? I'm pretty much done up here. There's another button I can press, but I don't know what they're doing. All right, and airbags all head down to join up. Okay, so we'll we'll say that you arrive uh, at the start of your next turn. Uh, but uh, Miyasaki Mako is going to sort of blink very uh, hesitantly at Enzo, uh, again as if she's seeing him for the first time and saying, uh, where am I? Do we have, like, radios or, like, a headset or, like, any means of talking between us as party members? You do. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose we have our agents. Yeah, we've got our earbuds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steel, Steel would, would have just said that to the entire everyone then. Like, the net, net runner left, and I hit a button. I don't know what it is. Isn't your job to know what you're doing? Can, can I reply to her? Or is it a bit of a... Uh, I would say you have, uh, just don't do a monologue. You're just kind of a, you're part of a hostage situation. Took some people hostages, stand down. Me? Hostage? No, I, I don't remember doing that. I suppose that's all I can do until my 
Yeah. So, uh, actually, same sort of situation plays out with uh, Toda and Akari. Uh, Toda's grip on her hostage uh, releases, and the hostage scrambles away fast as they can. And uh, Toda, again, just sort of looks around and says, Okay, this is not my apartment. Uh, you look like, and she points at Akari, you look like you know what's going on. What, what's happening here? You tell me. You broke in. You broke into this place and took these people hostage. Now I did? take four steps back against the wall. She looks around as if noticing the hostages for the first time and says, "Okay, uh, stepping back against the wall," and she does so. Oh. Now Toto was former police, correct? Correct. Okay. And then, uh, oh, I forgot to uh, change the initiative over. So Mia Sen would have been able to do the same thing. Uh, Xavier, her shotgun would actually stop being trained on you. And she's sort of looking around very confused, but hasn't said anything yet. Um, but it does mean it is now your turn, Xavier. Uh, not noticing, well, noticing that she's putting the gun down, I'll raise my weapon just kind of as precaution. Okay. And just tell her... Uh, out here in the hallway. And uh, she does step out into the hallway. And basically I'm like, you're under arrest. Okay. And she, like the others, very confused, doesn't know what's going on, uh, is compliant. Uh, and we come to Akari. I'm going to calm, activate comms, um, steal airbags. Find the net runner. But do you know what happens? Yes. Uh, host or the hostage takers appear to be controlled. Whatever you did has freed them of their control, and they're now cooperating. Find mm -hmm. the net runner. They might be the ones actually in command of the situation. They are still in the building, most likely. Um, I'm going to come to the... I'm basically taking all of my actions to do this. Um, then I'm going to calm the um, uh, Curie. Um, mm -hmm. uh, situation is under control. Hostages are safe. Um, the three hostage take the three known hostage takers are cooperating peacefully. Appears to be uh, cyber or. Uh, appear to have been controlled through malign influence somehow. We are still trying to track down the Netrunner. And uh, when a, when a Curry replies, it's very faint, very staticky, and uh, says something along the lines of, understood, sh military sh moving in soon, sh evacuate. I'm going to basically just shout that. I'm not going over comms at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, basically telling the hostages and uh, shouting at the hostages to form up an orderly line and head out the main stairwell. You will receive aid once you exit the building. Okay. So the hostages start moving that way. Uh, meanwhile, Enzo, what are you doing? Enzo's going to like have his pistol aimed at Masaki's head and be like, lie down. Hands behind your back. You will not be harmed. She does you have so. Three seconds to comply. Oh yeah, she she complies <laughs> in time. All right, and then with those uh, zip cuffs, and kind of cuff her quickly. Okay. So steel. Uh, at the moment, you are uh, pretty much in control of this elevator. Well, the first button I press seemed to have a good thing happen. I don't want to find out what the other thing. I'm going to. Uh, I'm just going to jack out and. Okay. Like, I want. To, uh, uh, I'll, I'll take my. I'll bring. Get my Hellhound back first. Yeah, as I was say, out. when you uh, jack out, it, it pretty much derezzes your Hellhound immediately. I don't know if I have to retrieve the program or not, so. I don't think you do. Okay. Um, then. I'll just draw my pistol and try and slowly and quietly make my way to the fourth all right airbags uh you arrive at the second floor uh you see xavier mm -hmm. is uh dealing with maya sen 
And what is it that you do now that you're here? All right, so he'll sort of look around, sort of figure everyone else, see everyone else is sort of being taken care of. So he'll dash through to see what the situation in this room is. Okay. So you see that there are indeed four hostages, including uh, Lewis Walker, uh, the individual that you were instructed to save. Uh, however, airbags, do you have human perception? Uh, I might. Let me take a look. Where has my sheep gone? Uh, it would be under your social skills. I, th I, I think I've accidentally closed my sheet. There we go. Uh, social skills. No, I don't. All right. Then uh, I believe this is just going to be, uh, what is it, plus empathy? If you mm -hmm. click the human perception, it's, it's still roll. It just won't be as high yeah, as we might like. The bonus. An 11. Uh, it's an 11. You notice that there's a bit of blood coming out of uh, Lewis Walker's nose and ears. Hmm... And no obvious cyberdeck equipment on his person? Not that you're seeing. But that mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's not there, if there is any. Uh, just means that he... Yeah. I did well. But uh, that said, uh, he'll sort of just like pause for a bit as he's like scans the situation and goes, Okay, we're getting you all out of here. You, you, you three head down the stairs. Shogun, and then oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, and does Lewis walk? Does Lewis go to go with them? He starts to go with them. And uh, so, a as he does, there, but I still go. Uh, I don't know. We, we, we got special instructions. We need to keep you safe for your buddies. And uh, he says, "No, no, no. I I need to get out of here immediately." Yeah, and he'll sort of like uh, look at him. What happened to you? Oh, they uh, they roughed me up. Yep. And uh, I'd imagine at that point he'll try to push past me, but I think airbags will actually sort of actually put a hand out and like hold him in place and go and just try to hold him there. Okay. Uh, this is going to be an opposed brawling, please. Mm hmm. The good news is that he has rolled a one, so I'm pretty sure that, uh, yeah, he has a negative one overall. So just roll <laughs> at least one and you're fine. Yeah, that was a 16. A 16, yeah. In that case, yeah, you're able to catch him and essentially get him in a grapple. No problem. Yeah. So, so yeah. So he goes, goes there, but he just sort of slips him into a, like, a chokehold. Goes... Oh, no, you don't. All right. So we're going to go to Shogun, and then we'll be out of initiative order. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what I can do. I'm just going to, like, I mean, is everything all right up there? We're fine. We got it under control. All right, I'm going to holster my pistol then. Okay. So we drop out of initiative order. Yeah. I'm going to be escorting um, Miss Kata out with cuffs and say, I think this might just be a formality. We'll figure this out. Trust me. And she's still dazed and confused, isn't really coherent, but she is complying. I'm going to wander up to airbags. Uh, airbags, why do you have the Minister of Foreign Affairs in a chokehold? Because the Minister of Foreign Affairs seems a lot less confused about what's going on than everyone else. And uh, also, and he'll like just point at the bleeding in the ears. Oh, I've seen that come out of steel a couple times. Yeah, I think we found our, f I think we found our fourth hostage taker. Hmm. You caught him red nose. Uh, can I do a cyber tech or perception check to look for? A stream or a deck? I'll give you or basic tech on that. Okay. Yeah, basically, airbags is 
tied up, just holding him wow. in a chokehold so that he can't Jesus. get away. A 35. Ah. Yeah, with the 35, not only do you find his cyber deck, which has been conveniently hidden beneath his shirt the entire time, you find that he has a cyber leg, uh, he's got rippers, and uh, he even has those kind of arms that uh, sort of, peer, you know, crack open and sh have a blade in them. Uh, oh, and just, just as well I pinned him down. Exactly. Oh. And uh, you also find his wallet with a thirty-five because why not? I mean, I'm going to not take anything from his wallet because that could be evidenced. But... <sighs> Mr. Walker, you have the right to remain silent. Everything you say can and will be held against you in court of law. All of your cybernetics will be thoroughly scanned and confiscated, should it not endanger your life. And yada, yada, yada. Do they have the Miranda rights here in Tokyo? I don't know. I don't believe they do, no. No, I, I don't know. No, that, that, was both, it, that was both in and out of character. Oh. They probably have some type of equivalent. Yeah, I shrug and just say, I saw it on a crime drama once. I always kind of wanted to say it, and once I got the, into this job, pull out another set of uh, zap cuffs and cuff him and take his cyber deck. Okay. Uh, as that happens, oh dear. As <laughs> that happens, uh, airbags, the good news is that this is mm -hmm. not hitting you. However, the glass shatters in the office space that you are, and a neat headshot completely causes Mr. Walker's head to explode. So there is no more head there. It is just neck and nothingness. God damn it, 10 Gallon. We had the situation contained. And actually, uh, 10 Gallon gets over the uh, the horn and says, enemy sniper, I'm, I'm trying to find where the hell they're at. But Lewis Walker uh, is no more. We're dealing with some cold customers. Yeah, at the here, at the Calm of hearing that there's an enemy sniper, uh, I just yell, "Everybody into the central hallway!" Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, airbags I, is gonna actually going to start dragging Walker's body into the hallway as well, and I think he's actually going to start trying to get him up the stairwell towards Steel. Okay. Steel is currently going down the stairwell to the fourth floor because Steel doesn't know how to not be nosy. Well, <laughs> when you uh, get to the fourth floor, it is a padlocked sort of key card reader type uh, entrance. It's not something you could easily break. Am I able to jack in? Uh, no, there is no interface port here. Okay. Yeah, so I would imagine at some point in the next couple of seconds, airbags will run into steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did and uh, so wave his attention. Got your net runner here. Enemy sniper took him out. Uh, quick, uh, w I think we need you to like go into the systems, pull any data you can before everything shuts down. Uh, the is there and is like taken back, like kind of grossed out. Is there? I mean, is there a brain still? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, there is a cyber deck. There is a cyber deck. His information is normally stored in the processor that's implanted in the brain. All right. Uh, wh what does it look like? A, a computer chip? I don't know, man. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'll take a look at the cyber deck, and if he has any chips or any data, I'll try and try not to puke yep. steel. We'll kind of see if yep. there's anything. And, uh, air, airbags will sort of attempt to maneuver himself to sort of shield steel from the worst of it, and then take out his ripper cores and like do a quick rake through to see if there's any remnant of a chip. Yeah, there's uh, there's no chip there, unfortunately. Uh, but Steel, go ahead and roll Damn me an it. interface, please. Also, just trying to identify it all if I can. If this is the netrunner I saw on this, I'll use my last three luck on this. Cause why not? All right. 16. A sixteen. Uh, with the sixteen, you are indeed able to confirm that this was the enemy netrunner. And the only other bit of information you get from the spinning down data is that there is a file. Uh, you don't know what the file is. You would have to ID it later, but uh, there is a file you could grab. I take it. <laughs> okay. Um, and if there's... What programs are in the person cyber... Uh, the cyber deck has otherwise shut down at this point. They don't have any of the programs still plugged in? Nope. Programs have been completely fried. <laughs> there's a... Just running on the last capacitors from the system clock mm -hmm. 
Uh, I mean, I got... Unless we're all running to evacuate right now, I can stop and ID the... Or try to... I, I mean, the military is moving in, so I'm pretty sure that we're going to want to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We evacuate. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to. I'm just going to make a cool check for Steel just to see if she pukes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a pretty good cool set. Yeah, I think I'm. I think you're, you're fine. fine. With a 16, you're fine. All right. So long story short, you guys managed to wrangle the three cyber psychos uh, and the hostages. The only casualty is Mr. Walker. And well, unfortunately, uh, was our primary target, <laughs> which was your primary target. However, it was also bad. Um, what I would say is when all of this comes out and uh, all of you, you know, give your side of the story, they confirm what Steel had going on in their deck, etc., etc. I also ID the file. Yeah, I'm getting to that. Uh, the file was more or less a hostage situation for Mr. Walker, uh, that if he did not comply and run certain programs at certain places, uh, his family would have been executed. Um, so you're sort of at a loss, I would think. You know, how deep does mm. this rabbit hole go? Very deep. Let's dial so, I mean, if I can... I'm thinking we I need would, to uh, start doing a bit of independent investigation here. I, I agree with that. And also, if Steel can, um, you know, before the cyber psychos get taken in security, are they, are, are, are they Borg enough for me to, like, plug into their fucking memory banks and shit to try and glean any information from there you're not police so you have no way of getting into them i mean before we get to the police like while we're still in the building i mean if you wanted to but you would definitely probably be taking the custody too there. yeah i was gonna say like they're compliant but if you start messing with chain of evidence the police are gonna take you yeah that's i would ikari would definitely draw the line like i know what you want to do and i'm sorry but i can't allow that right now Plus, whatever is in their brain might get into your room. There was a virus situation. It's there wasn't. The elevator is still running, and there's another control node that's probably linked to these guys. So yeah, that's. I also tell them, yeah, like there's another thing in the network here. My, it's probably linked to the cyber psychos. My guess as to what it is would probably be like kill them. <laughs> I don't know. They're like it will try and fry their brains. Yeah, the kill switch makes. Mm -hmm. Good thing hit the right, right, the right, deadly red button. Yes, yes, each. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. So with that handled, that is where we're going to end today's session. So mm. uh, thank you guys so much for having a good old session with me. Uh, this is where I'm going to end the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Thank you so much for tuning in, and see you in a few weeks later.